everybody, this is going to be take two. Um, I hope that you guys can see me. I'm going to just try and bring up some comments to see if I can see anything. Um, please be patient with me and I do apologize that this is difficult. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard, but you know, apparently it is. So I'll just wait and see what you guys can see and see people jump on. I, um, think I need a new computer the way this one's going. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to give you all of the camera angles that I was hoping for. Um, I was going to give you an overhead camera shot as well as um, a screenshot of my screen. Um, hi, Andrea. Is it a lot better? Hi, Bridget. Um, hi, Jane. Hi, Clouds. Hi, April. So I'm hoping this sounds a lot better. Um, I'm going to have to get, like I was saying, I'm going to have to get a, another computer because, well, nothing's working for me right now. So um, what I was going to show you guys was my design space and how you design the programs and everything like that. But of course, I can't actually share my screen with you now, so I'm just trying to do it with what I have. Um, hi, Jess. Hi, Maxi. Hi, Carol. So I'll just wait for a few more people to jump on. I do apologize that this has been such a stuff up. Um, so I'll just move my lap, my, my thing, whatever this is called, my iPad down, because I've uh, managed to get you guys up on my screen. And I can see everything perfectly fine. So, um, how's everyone's day been? I hope everyone's having a good weekend. That's uh, better, is it, Carol? Andrew says it's much better now as well. So, um, I do apologise. I've got um, limited stuff that I can work with, unfortunately. My husband said he's going to um, help me buy a new computer. So, that'll be exciting. Um, hi, oh, who have I missed here? I've got a lot of people that I've missed here. Um, so let's say hello to a few people. So sound is clear, says Jane. Thanks, Penny. Hi, Christina. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Gail. Uh, hi, April, Rebecca, Karina, Zephy. Paul's watching. I told you not to watch because you should be um, having some family time. Hi, Tan. Hi, Veronique. Uh, hi, Tanya. Hi, Nat. Hey, Beck. Oh, look, I'm just going to keep saying hey for a little bit. Just wait for you guys to build a suspense. Um, like I said, the shot we've got now is going to do something really tricky and have all these different shots, but apparently um, my computer's CPU is just maxing out, so I need to get a better computer. Which probably is what happened when Paul did his live on print and cut. All of the glitching that happened then was probably his CPU as well. Um, yes, Natalie, I do have an amazing name. <laughs> the flowers on your wall look so good. That excites me. Chantel, it should excite you because I'm working on some stuff for you. Um, hi, Kate. Hi, Crystal. Sorry if I've missed anybody. Hi, Di. Hi, Hayley. So I'm just going to, I know this sounds really stupid. I've literally got like, you guys are like a computer in front of me, but um, I just thought it was going to be easier this way. And um, I'm hoping the camera is a little bit better than when I use my phone as a camera too. Um, hi, Anne-Marie. Yes, I am feeling a bit better. I'm still a little bit flushed, um, but you know, I'll get there. So what we're making today is some... Uh, what are we making? We're making a name puzzle. So I'm going to make one for my little nephew, Max. I don't know if you can really tell. Um, but I made one for Brooklyn recently and I've made a couple of adjustments to this. So I'll just start by talking about how I designed it first. So um, whilst I can't show you my screen, which I wish I could, um, what I would do... No, it doesn't let me change to my screen. Um, <laughs> what I would do in this case is I just start by creating a... A rectangle the size roughly of how big I want my puzzle then inside my 
puzzle, I write the name and I sort of space it however I like. However, what I'm doing in this instance is I'm actually go gone and picked a font from Design Space that has like multi layers, so it has a shadow layer. That's so that when we put our puzzle pieces inside the M, it has some room in case, you know, to allow for fine motor skills and stuff. So you can see here it's a little bit. Um, of a wiggle room in there whereas my other ones if you couldn't get it straight in and pushed it in it wouldn't um, it didn't work very well so hi Emma hi Tanil hi Deborah well this is, yes definitely Sarah we always save our lives on the page so Paul go and have some family time so essentially what I've done is I've literally just created a rectangle and I've popped the name in there so what I've done is once I pop the name in there with its shadow layer still showing, I have then um, attached them all. So I can do a little um, afterwards, I can just do a little how I design it and share it um, or I can just share you the design that I've done and you can just change the names on it as well. So um, this one for Max, I used the Cricut font and basic what is it called? Sorry, I'm looking over at another screen. So it's the Cricut. Where is it? Let's ungroup. Cricut font and basic shapes font. That's what it's called. It has um, a layer effect to it. And I've just essentially attached them so that it will cut it out. So when it cuts it out, it cuts out the big M and then it cuts out the little M which formed these pieces here. And I just threw away that shadow piece. Um, I've done this and repeated that three times. So I've gotten three cutouts exactly like this so that my puzzle pieces, I can layer them three pieces thick. And then I've done one that isn't attached and doesn't have a shadow layer. So the words will be cut out of iron on. And then the final piece, which I'll cut tonight because I've already pre-cut some of it. The final piece will be um, just a rectangle, so it doesn't need to be attached. Now, I'll show you the file once I've got it all sorted. Um, hey, Tanya. Hey, Mum. Hey, Peggy. Hi, Brad. So um, what we'll do is we'll get started, but I'll talk to you about um, the supplies I'm using. So to start it off, um, I've got Cricut Iron-On. So I'm using one. Obviously, I'm using the word name Max, so Max is three letters so I've just picked three different colors however when I did Brooklyn's one I actually alternated a couple of the colors so that it kind of looked a little bit cute I think I used four different colors so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this I've got um, some basswood now this basswood is from uh, bolsacentral.com they're based in South Australia um, and this is an A4 size sheet I'm not really sure I can't remember how much the price was I think it was about five or six dollars for a sheet um, but I just bought up a whole bunch just so that I made it worth it um, we're going to place it onto a, a purple mat now this is your strong grip mat and I recommend it for all of your wood type products um, and I'm just going to place it on the mat and I'm just going to give it a brayer so this is just to make sure it's stuck down really, really well. Thanks, Rochelle. No, Subi, didn't miss it. I was just having technical difficulties. Um, sorry, hi, Suzanne and Suzette and Robin and Sharon. Sorry if I'm missing everybody. Um, it's hard for me to keep track of all the names on the side. Hi, Jane. I'm glad you're looking forward to this. So and then I just used some everyday masking tape. I just got this stuff from the reject shop. You can get it from wherever you like it. Some people use painter's tape as well. Um, for me, I'm just going to go with what I have in here anyway. So I just tape it up really good. I don't like to leave any chances that it's going to lift. And I just do it on all of the sides. So you do it however you feel comfortable. But for me, I would rather be safe than sorry. Um, and you also don't want too much, you don't want any hangovers on the edges. So I don't actually hang over the edge. You can fold it over, but it, you risk it getting caught in your um, cogs and then your red light can come up. Hi, Sarah. Yes, I'm feeling a bit better today. Um, been out and about and spent some time with family. So it's been good. Um, hey, Rhonda. Welcome. 
Hey, Lorinda. Alrighty, so now that I've got all of my basswood um, taped down, what we need to do, and I've already done it, but you need to make sure you move your star rollers. So these rollers on your machine normally sit throughout your makeup. What you need to do is you need to move them all the way over, and that's so that when we um, put the mat in with the wood, the star rollers don't leave lines on the wood. Hi, Candice. So I'm just going to move my blade out. This is my fine point blade. And I'm just going to I'll just move some of this stuff out of the way too. So it's, I need to find my knife blade that I only just put in here. So just give me a moment. So I've just got my knife blade. Um, hi, Flo. Hi, Marilyn. So what's really good is to make sure you have a nice and sharp knife blade. Um, nine times out of ten. And hi, Sam. If you look back when I um, did any of my lives like on my Easter Bunny um, Please Stop Here sign, the reason why your wood won't cut is if your knife blade isn't sharp enough. So um, I always make sure. Uh, Sarah, it's from bolsacentral.com. They're online. So I always just make sure that I have a really nice sharp one. And if you're not sure, just put another blade in because you don't want to waste your wood. Um, so I've just popped him in. Um, and unlike what we've seen on some of the pages and stuff, you don't remove the plastic cover. That plastic needs to stay there and it helps guide the, um, the tool around. Hi Clarissa, hi Charlene, hi Sam. I don't think I, I don't know who I've said hello to anymore, so I do apologize. Alrighty, so now that we've got that in, I'm just going to, and you can't see, and I apologize because I really wanted to show it to you on this on the screen, but I'm just going to tell my machine to make it. So, oh. And of course I forgot to change myself from the make the joy to the maker so I use my joy quite a lot so now I just need to make myself change no worries Sarah um they're they're quite I mean they're local in terms of they're Australian so um I think I got mine within a week or so alrighty so I'm just going to go and make it and I'm actually going to I need to cut the, the blue first which the blue is going to be my wood so I'm just going to tell my machine that I am cutting. Sorry, won't be long. Uh, Nadia, it really depends on what type of projects they are. Um, I have successfully cut probably a good maybe 10 projects. And like, I, I'll be completely honest, I when I say projects, I mean in depth, not like one cut. I mean, when I do a project with wood, I probably do at least five to ten cuts per project so as an example a project for me might have been when I was cutting um, balsa wood mason jars for a, a demo so I did that once and I probably cut about 12 of them at a time um, so I, I think it really just depends on what you um, what you're cutting and how much you're cutting at a time I, there's no exact science to it um what's the difference between the joy the maker and brand new and bought the maker the joy is just tiny it's small and but it cuts longer lengths and does matless cutting the maker has all the capabilities of the adaptive tool system so you can cut wood you can cut fabric you've got the rotary blade you've got the scoring wheels you've got the scoring stylus you um that you can use you've got the uh what are those words the engraving tip, all of the extra tips that you can get, um, whereas the joy will only cut and draw. So you've kind of got, um, you know, different, they've got different features completely. So you won't feel like you've missed out anything with the maker. So I'm just going in and I'm going to tell my machine that I am using a wood product. So I'm just picking from the drop down in Design Space Wood. And then I'm going to uh, select the option for Basswood 1.6 millimeters. So I'm selecting this option because essentially I'm using 1.5 millimeter basswood. So I'm selecting it so that there's no problems there. It always gives me a little bit of a warning. It says, you know, move the star wheels off to the side, which we've already talked about, and make sure that your wood is taped down to the mat. Um, 
Yeah, so Vicky, they're pretty good. What's the font used for this? I missed it. So it was Cricut, Cricut Basic Shapes font. Um, basic font and uh, it's it's a Cricut font. It's Cricut Basic and Shapes or something along those lines. I can get the exact one. I'm just not on the screen anymore. Um, no, you can't cut acrylic on the Maker Cloud. Sorry, you can engrave it, but you can't cut it. So I'm just going to load the mat. And I'm just going to move what I have behind it out of the way. So now it's basically just saying to me that I just need to load the mat, make sure the knife blades in and press go. So what I'm cutting now is literally just going to be a rectangle. I didn't want to cut anything too complex on my live because every single time I do, um, I end up having to hand cut or something. So, um, alrighty, I brought heaps of vinyl and I'm new to this. Oh, how do you know if my HTV is permanent or your HTV will always be permanent. So anything that's iron on or HT, it should stay on your shirt forever. The permanent or removable relates to self-adhesive vinyl. So um, you should read your packaging or where you got your vinyl from to know whether it's uh, permanent or not. Um, hi, Tian, you're from Bolsa Central sorry you're on the bolsa central website now what's the maximum thickness and ply you've had success with look personally i wouldn't go with anything above the two um but i because i know there's a setting in design space for 1.6 millimeters i opted for the 1.5 so that i had some um better better success with all my cuts so since i've been using the basswood from bolsa central i've not had any problems with it cutting through based on the settings that design space have Hey, Patty. Yes, you do need to get this size of wood, um, Zoe. The, it's from bolsacentral.com. Yes, it is the cartridge that used to come with your expression. I remember it from when I had my expression. Um, hi, the blade you're using isn't the one that comes with the maker, is it? No, rel, um, is it rel? Sorry, um, it's not the one that comes with the maker. So the maker comes with the uh, fine point blade, which is this one here. And it also comes with the rotary blade, which is like the little, it's got like a little wheel on it. So it's like cutting for fabric. So um, if you want to cut wood, you do need to buy the knife blade and housing. Uh, April, you can cut some woods on the Explore Air 2. Um, I'd have to look up exactly which ones. They were definitely not going to be any of the thicker ones, like they're not going to be anywhere near the 2.4 millimetres. I believe that the um, Air 2 can cut um, up to 1.4 or 1.5 millimetres, but I'm happy to, um, oh, sorry. I'm happy to have a little test run with my balsa wood, sorry, my, with my bass wood on my Air 2 and see if that works and let you know. Um, uh, this little compartment here, Sheree, I actually made it. So if I just pull it out, it is literally just a little compartment, little thing that sits in my maker that I made out of 600 GSM cardstock. So I just layered it and then all I have to do is simply pop it in. It fits perfectly into my little holder section and I just pop my little blades in. So all of my stuff sort of fits in here nice, nice and neat. So it's just a little blade holder. It's, it's, you can make one too. Um, so yeah, um, April, I'll definitely uh, note to myself to get my Explore Air 2 down maybe tomorrow sometime. So uh, now that this is cut, what I usually do is I kind of bend a little to see if it's cut all the way through. I'm not really sure because I can't tell. Let me just grab my weeding tool. So this is um, just done 14 passes. So I might just get it to just do another pass. It's not really popping up. So to do another pass, you simply press the Cricut C button to go again. So this will do another pass. So once again, it goes back and just checks the um, the blade to make sure I've got the correct blade in. 
Uh, agreed, would love the pattern. Okay, so um, you guys can actually find the pattern on my, um, well, I've shared it on Nat's Crafty Life many, many, many times. Um, however, if you know how to access and get into Cricut Community, you can also find me in the Cricut Community because I have it in there. Um, I'm just going to sort of lift this and just see. It's really hard for me to tell on this angle if it's cut. So give me a moment. Normally I have cutting down the bottom and I probably should have told it to cut down the bottom so I could test it and bend it. So it seems pretty, it's hard because it's really tight onto the, yeah, I'm going to lift it up just to test it. So um, normally when you're cutting, when I cut my, um, what are they called? My puzzles, I normally have two sheets and I, because if I can test it down the bottom, I know that this one will be tested, but I can't really test this one down the bottom. So I'm just going to half peel it to see if it comes up and by just peeling it up, yeah, I can see that's cut perfectly. So I'm just going to unload. Whoops, nearly dropped my maker. Huh. Alrighty. No, I didn't add any more settings, Sue. Um, I just used the standard settings for 1.6 millimeter basswood. So basswood is obviously a different type of wood to balsa wood. So don't get those too confused because they will have obviously different settings. I'm just peeling off my tape. This mat has a lot of masking tape on it from consistent use. So give me one moment. You guys can keep chatting with me though. Um, yeah, definitely um, Tian, grab another knife blade um, while the spotlight batch is valid because you'll find yourself with this wood. I I won't use anything else now because I absolutely love it. So I'm going to just peel it off my wood and it has a really nice smooth feeling and unlike, um, bol um, unlike balsa wood, it doesn't have that flaky feel to it. Um, so I'm going to turn it around and remove, oh, maybe I could have done one extra cut. I can see here it's through. So you can see it's cut through, but it's just not quite all the way. Let me just see if I can pop it out. It's just the corners. So I knew this was going to happen because it always happens on my live. So I'm just going to just nick it. It doesn't need much. It just needs some encouragement. So if I literally just go once, if I'd done one more cut on my knife blade, it would have been fine. That one didn't need anything because it's already out. And then, um, Vicky, that's a shame. You, actually, believe it or not, I didn't get a voucher either, but you should be able to use the bonus 40 and it should still work online if you're going to work, get it online. So I'm just making sure that the edges, because sometimes the edges get caught. So yeah, it's just this little corner here. And really, that's a pretty clean cut. I don't know if you can tell, but there's not any splinters or anything there. It's a really flush cut. Eh, sorry. Um, Deborah, if you just look up Bolsa Central or um, Tian, you just made an order. Can you post the link for me? I should have got that ready. Um, but it's just on BolsaCentral.com and it's a... They look, they call it a ply wood, but yeah, it's not really a ply like the ply we would get. So I'm just going to move my, this one out of the way. And I realized I actually have to cut my iron on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to replace my blade with the fine point. Thanks for letting Thanks, Dahlia, for letting Vicky know that. So I'm just going to move my um, rollers back, so I do apologise. Hi from New Zealand. 
Um, basswood is way better, Kara. Um, it's less flaky. I think um, out of the density factor for any of the um, woods, um, basswood is not as dense as balsa wood, so it doesn't flake like like all the others do. So I'm just going to change my materials now back to iron on. So everyday iron on. And because I'm an idiot and I know it, uh, let me just, sorry about this. I'm just, I forgot to mirror all of my iron on. So I'm just going in and mirroring it. Done. No worries, Can Candice. I'm glad you've ordered some. You will love it. Um, I feel like I've missed some people. So, the Jane, the number of passes is determined by the setting you use in Design Space. So, I use the 1.6 millimeter basswood setting, and because I used that setting, it was going to cut 14 times because that's what it's set to. I just gave it an extra cut, but because it got stuck in the corners, I could have gotten away with another cut or I've just used my true control blade just to nick where it's getting caught in the corners where the two cut lines meet. Alrighty, so I'm just using regular everyday iron-on. I'm just going to press go. Hi, Julie. How are you? See if I'm missing any other comments. Sorry. I don't think I'm missing much. Awesome. So um, it's just now cutting the iron on one bit at a time. So like I said, I was an idiot and I did not mirror any of my letters and whilst I know that an X doesn't necessarily need to be mirrored I'm doing it just to play it safe. Um, can you use a deep point blank to cut the wood? Deborah I'm not 100% certain because I haven't tried it with it but um, I was just saying to one of the ladies before that I'm going to test the deep point blade so the black one in my Explore Air 2 and see if it cuts it as well so I'll let you guys know on the page if it's successful or not. So don't go and waste just a, um, waste money on buying the wood if you're not sure if it will cut. I've got some scraps here I can use to test it for you. I'll let you guys know on the page though. Um, hi Nat, sorry Miss Info on the wood. Is the basswood laser plywood? Um, I don't know what laser plywood is. Um, I know that the basswood is like a type of ply, but it's a little um, more dense than the regular ply. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm not like an inform like I don't have a lot of information on wood types. I just know that it says it's in the ply slash basswood section of um, bolsacentral.com and it um, is 1.5 um, millimeters thick, so I don't really know what, you know. Uh, yes, Rebecca, you will need a separate housing. So get your knife blade and housing. And then after that, you just need the replacement blades. So yeah, I, I couldn't tell you in terms of the wood, um, whether it's laser plywood. I know that it is basswood. I know that it's thin and it cuts. Sorry, I'm not very educated when it comes to uh, types of things like that. Uh, thanks, Tian. You're amazing. <laughs> um, thanks, Alana. I, I couldn't tell you if it's suitable for a laser cutter. All I know is that I can cut it on the maker. So I do apologize, but I don't really have a laser. I, well, I don't at all have a laser cutter. So I don't really look into that side of things. But I'm just going to just give you guys a little look see here. I'm just weeding. I'm a bit of a rough weeder. As I say every single time. So I'm just going to weed my letters. And these are to go on to my um, thing. Oh, I can't even speak. 
Um, these are to be ironed on to the wood, which I have already, um, I've already fused together the wood for my letters because I wanted to make sure that they were done beforehand. Um, but I will show you how I put together and assembled the actual base of the um, puzzle. So I'm just getting this out of the way. Alrighty, so I've got my three letters for Max all there. Um, bless you to my husband who just sneezed in the background. So I will iron them onto these pieces. Now these pieces probably look a little bit thick, but I've already fused and glued this, them together. Um, awesome. So what I do here now is... Um, Essentially what you'll end up with, you'll actually end up with three of these and not two. I threw one away because I don't need it. So you'll end up with three like this with Max written on it. And then you'll end up with one like this. So what you want to do is you want to keep, I do three layers. So with my design, I do three layers. You can do as many as you want. I've put three layers of letters in here. So I've glued three different A's together. I'll go through that, Rochelle. Don't worry about that. I'll discuss that part. Um, awesome. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, bless him. <laughs> so yeah, I've done three layers here just to glue it together. Um, so what I want is I don't want to put the three maxes on top here because when I put the puzzle in, it'll um, be the same height. I want it to sit a layer atop. So what I've done is, I don't know if you can really see, but if I put two layers on top and I've got my three layer A, they'll still be able to grab at it properly. Whereas if I have it flush and it's, I don't know, let me get it level with the camera. See how it sits sort of up? If I don't have it sitting up, they won't be able to pull at it. I don't know, that doesn't make sense. So what I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start by gluing these two get together. So the glue that I use is just the Helmer's Tiger Grip. Um, there are probably other brands of glue on the market. I picked this up literally for $3.99 at a discount shop. So like at your choice warehouse or we call, I think our one that I got it from was called Mega Choice. It was literally just a discount store in town. Um, so it's kind of like your cheapest chips places. So um, for $4, I wasn't going to go and buy another type. So literally all I do is just place some glue in the parts that I think it needs it. Just a couple of dabs maybe. I was gluing the letters just this afternoon while I was having a chat on the phone with Paul. So I'd literally just dab it. It's not soaked in glue, but it's just a dab of glue. I mean, it probably looks like more than it is and I'll have to wash some of it off. But I'm just going to line it up and I guess because it's um it's a shape like it's got letters and stuff you can kind of use your fingers to sort of make sure that it all sits flush and I just wipe away any of the excess glue yeah so um Chantal it says that it's for paper card wood plastics metal cork fabric carpets leather canvas and many others it's the ideal all-purpose glue. It's water cleanup, solvent-free, non-toxic and safe to use, but it's Tiger Grip. So I wouldn't recommend hot glue, Bella, um, only because hot glue um, doesn't sit flush when you use it. Uh, Julie, you could buy a pack of balsa, but balsa wood is different to basswood and it will flake, just so you know. Um... Helmer's tacky glue is awesome too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've never used tacky glue on wood, so I can't really comment on that. But um, if it works on wood and you think it's going to work, by all means. So now that I've got that sort of stuck together, I actually use, there it is. I actually just use um, usually a sticky tape holder just to hold it down. But what I want to do is I want to put some glue on the back here so I can attach it to the back. Um. So yeah, um, I'm sure Spotlight do sell this probably. I've seen it, but I just, I'm a bargain shopper. So don't judge me when I don't want to pay a fortune for some glue. 
Um, so once again, I'm just putting some glue where it wants to go, just so that this stays down. I mean, you could probably paint the glue on if you needed to with like a paintbrush, but like I said, I've just done little squiggles around. I'm going to place my wood on it and just make sure it's in the right position. So as I squeeze it together, I notice that some of the glue comes out. I just sort of wipe it down the sides because that way it kind of fuses all the pieces together. Now, I'm just going to clean up some of the inside bits where it's come through. So if you have a look, some of the X, the glue's coming through in there. In there. Where am I? Going back to fronts. Um, yeah, if, you, if it comes with some samples, then by all means, grab the sample glue. Um, I think somebody else said to me that they were getting sample glue too. And I mean, I feel like bolsacentral.com is an untapped resource for us crafters because it's got a lot of people on there that like make um, balsa aeroplanes and stuff. So, um, you know, my fingers are too fat. How dare I have fat fingers? I'm just trying to clean up my glue a little bit. So now that I've got it fused together, I'm just going to literally sit it here with, um, uh, just something heavy on it. So let me just see. You can lightly sand the balsa and I've done that with just an enamel file, but, um, it's really flaky. Like it's, it won't look as nice as the basswood. You could send the basswood though. Um, yes, Brad, you could bulldog clip it, but I don't have bulldog clips. So <laughs> I'm using a tape dispenser. You could literally put it under a couple of books. Um, awesome. So yeah, Helmers does give some room to move. So when I put it on, I could then adjust. So I'm just literally just going to wipe the top of my glue just to get rid of that and get rid of my iron-on scraps. So then we can start working with my iron-on. Alrighty, so just excuse the mess. I'm literally in a different direction to how you would normally face. Normally my camera's back here and you guys are looking that way. You could... Um, definitely. Yes, yeah, Sarah, I could use an earbud, but my earbuds are standing, sitting over there because I do use them for craft and I would literally be like in front of the camera trying to get them. So I wasn't going to waste, <laughs> I wasn't going to annoy you guys with that. There's nothing. What's under my makeup? Oh, I don't know if there's anything under my makeup, Rebecca, but my makeup is now closed because I'm not going to be cutting anything more on it so I mean oh yeah you could put it on your maker but there's a did you know there's like a little hole under your maker if I put it under my maker it wouldn't actually put pressure on it unless you put it on the legs so definitely sorry I was like what did I put under there um alrighty so I'm not prepared tonight and I never remember my settings but because I'm going to be putting some iron on onto some wood, I'm just going to search the Cricut Heat Guide. So if you literally go to Google on your computer or your tablet or anything like that and search Cricut Heat Guide, it's usually the first option that shows. Yeah, Rebecca, I was a bit slow, sorry. Um, and then I'm going to be using my Cricut Easy Press 2. So I tell it that I'm using it. I mean, I'd show you, but I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah, you can see that. So I'm telling it that I'm using the Easy Press 2. I'm going to be using Everyday Iron On. I'm going to be putting it onto wood. I have an Easy Press mat and I click apply, 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 and it comes up and it tells me to use it for 150 degrees Celsius for 40 seconds. So the heat guide is really helpful if you need to see what settings you're using. Obviously, I can't get close enough to the camera right now, but it's really good and it tells you what settings. And so many times I get people who ask me, what settings do you use for this? And normally I go, uh, 
what does the heat guide say? So um, I don't have an encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to every setting for every product. I wish I did know every setting off the top of my head, but it it's just not, you know, I don't, I'm not that smart. <laughs> um, was just checking over the site. So it was basswood, laser, plywood, 1.5 millimeters. If that's what comes up, then great. Um, I just know that the 1.5 millimeters works for me. And I'm just moving my mat just because I don't want too much heat to get on it and warp it. So I do apologize. Um, but yes, that would be it. I just bought mine a little while ago. So I'm just heating up my heat press. I already have it. Believe it or not, I have been actually used my small heat press since my last live where it was, um, I was putting um, iron on onto plywood. Um, so it's already at the right setting. So 150 degree, degrees Celsius for 40 seconds. So Feel free to keep commenting and asking some more questions while we're going. So now we're going to wait. It doesn't have much longer to go. So I'm going to start with my M for Max. And the hard part here will be getting it lined up perfectly. And... If I'm super smart about it, I would have had a piece of paper or parchment paper and I didn't so um, I'm just going to slowly inch it on hang on let me move this out of the way a little bit more so normally I would say put some baking paper down but all my baking paper is behind my computer right now and I can't get to it um, Nick I got my big mat actually from the US. I got Jules to get it when she went to Canada, actually. She got it shipped to Canada. Um, but you can buy them from Craft Online. The Heat Guide is not an app. It's just off Google. It's just internet so that they can make any updates whenever needed. But yeah, like Julie does, just save it as a favorite. Um, I was here I was thinking I was going to paint my letters. Great idea to hit. Yes, so I'm just using HTV. I'm just slowly popping it on and putting not a lot of pressure, just putting my hands on it. Um, I actually, with my nieces, I actually painted the, um, the base white with some chalk paint. However, I didn't like how it looked in the end. So I thought before my nephew, I'd just keep it natural looking because I thought that would look cute. So, but you can do whatever you like. You can paint, but I like the look of the iron on, if I can get it to work right. Like if it, it stuffs up on live, then, you know, we've got problems. Um, you could use a normal iron blender, but obviously I can't tell you what settings to put it on. So that I did use heat tape once, but it still didn't work properly for me. So, and of course my M has moved. So I'm going to recut my M. While it's wet, I'm going to peel it off. Sorry, while it's hot, I'm going to peel it off. Actually, I could probably... Sorry, I'm just trying to be smart here. So while I've literally just peeled that off because it moved to the wrong place and I've just stuck it back on. I'm just going to see what happens because it didn't actually come off the sheet. So just see, we'll see if that works first before we uh, say that that's the thing to do. Um, so once again, I'm just going to... Put it on and hope for the best. So we'll see if that cools down and lets me. If it doesn't, then at least I know it's perfectly lined up now so that if I give it another press, it will be fine. Um, anything else? See, I'm all about like <laughs> fixing a potential problem. <laughs> To cut the rectangle, it did 15 passes. It did the 14 that came with the setting and I just did an extra pass to play it safe. However, the blade I have in has already, and it did it, it moved again. So I'm gonna peel it off, like I'd said. Um, 
and see if that works. That w I'd like to see how that looks, Bella. That sounds interesting. Um, I probably wouldn't apply the vinyl first. The reason why I wouldn't do that is that you risk um, the vinyl lifting. Um, it's not saying that you couldn't. It's just not something that I would do. Oh, I'm going to sneeze in a minute. Nope. Hell. No. <laughs> so I've just popped that. I'm just trying something different. I literally just, I've literally just given it a bit of heat so that the glue starts setting. And then I'm going to place it where I want it to. And then down. <clears throat> Uh, Bella, oh, sorry, I sound like a 12-year-old boy. Bella, I'm going to say I share the template that I used for this specific puzzle. You may need to change, obviously, you'll need to change the name and probably the size and spacing of the words, but I'll like, outline how to do that. I'll do a little quick short video that I'll film and just let you guys know from there. Uh, Patty, the mini might, um, I'm, I was concerned about how much you have to move the mini around, so I didn't um, opt for that because I didn't want the vinyl to be moving. Thanks, Brad. I really should have thought of that. I just wasn't smart today. I'm still not well, but I'm here. So I'm just going to check my M. So it's peeling off. Um, like you saw, I didn't, um, I had problems with my M to begin with. So, so now that I've peeled it off and some of the glue is a bit streaky, just give me a moment. I might just, there's some glue in the crevices. So I'm just going to get that in. Alrighty, so my M's done. I'm just going to give it a little press just to, with this sheet. Ew, that's a gross sheet. Um, I was going to say with the sheet back on, but it's very gluey. So I'll wait and see what happens with the other ones first. <laughs> Emma, I don't know about that. Where are you located? <laughs> it's maybe not as simple as um, just coming over to my house. So I'm just getting the little glue off. There's some glue here. Um, and then, so definitely these ones are the better ones when I didn't stuff up. So I'm just going to repress just quickly the A, not for long, just enough. I just wanted to get it some consistency and then I'll do the M as well. Get it nicely lined up. You probably could flow, but it's wood. It doesn't conduct heat as much as metal wood or the ceramic coasters. So I've got my puzzle pieces all done. So I've got an M, an A, and if I can manoeuvre my hands, thanks Rochelle, and an X. So now that we've done that, I'm just going to move my Easy Press out of the way. My piece, it probably still has some time to cure and whatnot and get fully done, but if I put my puzzle pieces in now, M. A X. So here's my puzzle. You can see that there's room, so there's wiggle room for it. So for a child to help with their fine motor skills, I made sure I used one with a shadow so that we've got the room here. Um, 
Yes, Bonnie, you could definitely use permanent vinyl. I just love using iron-on on wood. <laughs> it's just me. Um, but you could definitely use um, permanent vinyl. Um, Lani, I probably wouldn't, to be completely honest. Um, I just found that in the past I was doing some puzzles where I'd already applied things to the wood before I started cutting and as it passed through the top layer where the things had been applied actually started lifting up with the blade. So I'm uh, just going to close up just so you can see. Ooh. So uh, that's what we made tonight. Well, I mean, I pre-cut some of it to make it quicker. But, I mean, when I made, did the pre-cutting, I think the, everything else took about an hour to cut. So just keep that in mind. Um, oh, so I'm going to, because it's uh, late and I probably need to go to bed because I'm tired. Um, what I will do is I will take a nice photo of these if it's okay to do in the morning. I'll take a nice photo because I get better lighting then. And I will um, upload the file that I have along with any information and links that haven't already been shared. Um, and then if you have any questions, you just comment and ask away. Um, I'm going to test the Explore Air 2 with the deep point blade. Oh, that zoom focus. Whoa. So I'm going to test the, um, the deep point blade uh, to see if it works and let everyone know so that we can see if any air users are able to do the same project and um, next week we actually have Paul on again yes you definitely could Jane uh, next you could put HTV on the rectangle top in a different color as well I wanted it to look natural but by all means you could do that you could also put the HTV on the bottom so that maybe you could put like a little bit here where the X's to go so that it's color coordinated so that they could pick the light blue to go with the light blue. You could definitely put HTV wherever you want. Um, <laughs> so next week is Paul and he's actually going to be doing um, a fabric sewing. So he's going to be making a face mask because at some point in the future he's actually going to have to travel via plane to Sydney um, for maybe his next TVSN show. And uh, all of the airlines are now saying that you will need to wear, um, that they would like you to wear face masks. So he thought that uh, he could make his own. So tune in 7 o'clock on Thursday to watch Paul get his sewing skills on. He's way better than me. So, you know, he's probably worthwhile watching. Um, <laughs> and I will <laughs> go back and sleep for a little bit longer <laughs> um, and maybe get some food. So... Thank you for joining me. Sorry about my technical difficulties. Um, Vicky, you do need to calibrate the first time you use your knife blade. It is very easy. Just follow the prompts. But um, thank you very much for joining me um, and putting up with this hot mess. And um, <laughs> I will see you guys on the page soon. All right, guys. Bye.